Hello, I'm Kyle. Welcome to Give Paws Hobby, the channel where I stop to appreciate the things I love to fill my free time with. Today, we're back for the first time in a while with a, a first part of a two part So What's All This About? Because if ever there was a game that needed to be broken into broken in twain um, for the the visuals, for the, the stuff aspect of it, and for the ideas aspect of it, it's this. So this is the back of the box because I'm on green screen land, so I'm gonna show you the front of the box right now because I don't wanna mess it up because it is too dang pretty. Um, what I'm talking about is uh, Old King's Crown by Eerie Idol Games. Now, just kind of to get this out of the way right off the bat, this is a prototype. This is a, um, a, a, a all, all artwork, all mechanics, all uh, components are subject to change. Um, this will be coming out uh, late October um, to uh, crowdfunding on Kickstarter and it will, um, again, continue to be developed. Um, but I am uh, lucky enough to be holding a real copy of this after having played it on TTS and talking with um, Pablo Clark and Andrew McKelvey. McKelvey. <laughs> I was like, it sounded wrong in my mouth. Um, so the the guys at Eerie Idol Games sent me um, this prototype, and um, it has the new solo mode, which I've been playing and loving um, because I, I intend to make uh, some teaching videos for it. Um, but also, like I said before, the follow-up to this video about the ideas of the game. Now, I want to make sure that I am fully engrossed in the newest version of it before I just dive into that. So for today, all we're talking about is the stuff that's inside this box. And uh, I will just come right out and say it is glorious, it is uh, evocative, it is transporting. Um, I, I, there are other adjectives I could use, um, all of the adjectives, honestly, but um, I think it's best that I just instead show you. However, before I do, so again, this is um, an episode of firsts, first in a while that I broke with this series into two, um, first ever that I'm showing a uh, like mail to me prototype, so that's a really exciting thing. Um, but also first ever that I'm going to be showing a decent amount of B-roll because the normal, just like open the box and show it as I go, just is not going to do this justice. Um, so with that said, let's go over to the table. All right, so here we have Old King's Crown, a tale of royalty, rebels, and bruises. And first off, just the the artwork, I, it cannot be stressed enough how like beautiful the artwork is. Um, and the, the awesome part is this this cover, uh, this artwork here, this isn't just like some random thing, just like some nice pastoral scene. Like this is the game board, as you will see um, soon. But every, when you look at it, there are little details that, that call out like the mechanics of the game. And I said, I know I told you this is not going to be the ideas episode, but um, just right from the top, it, it has to be pointed out how much care and and uh, <laughs> foresight was put into all of this, this artwork because there's a lot of it. Um, it's not all here yet because this is the prototype um, and you know, there's, there's thing work that has to be done. Um, so uh, hefty, hefty boys, um, rule book number one is 35 pages if you include the inside back cover. I mean, the, I can't, just it's so beautiful. But yeah, 34 pages um, with, uh, with a, a sequence kind of overview here. But then solo mode has its own rule book, which is 17 pages with its own reference on the back. And I gotta be honest, um, these are really, really well laid out. Um, they have, they kind of check all the boxes that uh, people typically look for. The, they have a table of contents. Um, they also have the big glossary at the back of the main rule book. The, the rules 
again, without getting into the actual rules, are filled with keywords and they do a really good job of making those keyword words interlace. Um, so once you kind of understand a keyword and you assign that understanding to the word, um, then they just use it in a sentence and your brain goes, ah, yes, I know how this works. It's, it's really been awesome in the couple games I've played so far, the solo mode that um, I'm, I'm just kind of like feeling those neural pathways build in my brain from the rules. So they've done a wonderful job, but more about these later in the other episode. For today, we know why we're here. Um, it's all the beautiful bits. Um, but first I'm gonna do some magic because the big things are on the bottom. So, all right, so here it is, the game board. Like I promised, um, this is, this becomes this. And um, again, just like, the amount of care that went into the graphical design. Because if you look at this, this is not, these are not like vignettes taken from the big picture. This is this is a one-to-one, -one, as far as my untrained eye can tell, of this picture turned into this board with these overlays put over it. So the fact that in the Necropolis, there's this perfect little like spooky situation going on down here, or, you know, the castle is made so you can see like the fancy, like the big parts and the text box goes over like the little, but it's, it's the more you think about it, the more impressive it gets of how that artwork was turned into this board. And it's, it seems like one of those chicken or the egg situations of like, uh, I mean, I, I think probably not. They probably must've known they wanted it roughly like this. And that's how, what inspired it. But still Pablo, come on ridiculous um and, and andrew um so as near as i can tell like the two are just like a dna like double helix because as far as again i can tell pablo is doing the artwork andrew is doing the graphic design and this is what we get so two thumbs up to that team um so you have the board there are six areas up here which are highlighted by their their little areas again rules i know you're salivating i was the first time I played it, the first time I opened this up, that'll be in later videos. I'm just showing you the beautiful parts. This is the Great Road, which is uh, the game's version of a market. And um, you can see like a little caravan going over here. And the, the theme of this, you can see the road kind of winding its way through here, is that this is just like, like the name implies, a great road that runs through the kingdom. Um, and it's sort of outside of the battle. Um, so this is where you can come, send your people to buy cool stuff. Uh, I don't even know where to go to next. Uh, actually, yes, I do. <laughs> we have to stop here. Um, so the four factions in the game um, are each represented by a different color. They have different sets of components and everything as you might imagine. Um, so we have the nobility, which are um, kind of like, I've been pointing out to my kids who we've been playing a lot of playing this game by looking at the components, the crown with the keyhole, like trying to keep things un under lock. This is the status quo, the people who have been ruling the kingdom thus far, but now the king's gone. They don't know where they are. And the nobility wants to keep things going as they have always been. Um, then you have the uprising. I'm just kind of showing you this because again, they didn't, these aren't, they weren't content to just like make one pretty layout. You can see this is like all the keyhole adorned like stones and these chains and stuff over here. And then you go to the uprising, which is a broken crown. So these are the bomb throwers, plot schemers. There's fire and stuff. They are trying to take down that, uh, you know, the familial rule of uh of this kingdom um then you have the wilds um the wilds the clans <laughs> not the wilds um good thing i have a rule book here so the the clans are uh you can see this kind of like a mountaintop with like a dagger in the, the and they are trying to say like hey maybe we just like shouldn't be ruling over this land maybe we should let the land do its thing a little bit um and then 
the last one, the gathering, a little crown like a, a flame, is the really, again, like kind of spooky, witchy faction um, meeting at midnight doing, uh, you know, ceremonies that no one understands or okay so the four factions of the game four very different perspectives of how the kingdom should be run uh with the king being gone and um you know it's another line for the game is what crown will you wear which is not strictly metaphorical um, but it's also visual as you can see on those boards but also on the components um so I'm going to do another uh, magic spell and get some of those out because there's just too many for me to like try to muddy my way through open a bunch of baggies while talking. So, okay, I I, I couldn't help myself here. Uh, I just had to get everything out. So that was a really uh, effective spell I just cast. So this is a lot. Um, you'll notice on the four player boards, I filled them up with components for each uh, faction. Um, and they are all kind of iterations of the same thing. We have the main super chonky piece here, which are obviously unique to the four, I love that fire one, um, to the four factions. Um, but then we also have their little companies, which are smaller, um, so if we're thinking like uh, Oath, almost like your main meeple compared to your armies. Um, it's not entirely a one-to-one -one comparison because you're not actually moving around with your herald, as the big one is called. Um, but uh, that's, again, for another day. Um, but just in terms of size, you have two different size components there, but they're all screen printed, all wood, all evocative. I mean, like the burning, the fire within the building, or just like the crumbling edifice. It's just so um, then, uh, so these are double-sided boards, um, and they are, uh, they have a few slots. So one is your hand size, so the little star, start with a hand size of six. We have all these other cards because there's reasons why you would have to change over the game. So you can remember where those, what your hand size is. It also has these uh, tokens, which I'm not gonna lie. I don't, I haven't figured out exactly what these are meant f to be used for yet, but I'm sure that will become revealed in time as I just play more with the physical version of the game. Um, and then last, uh, for in terms of the board, we have these, uh, these are their abilities, which can be exhausted, and then you um, can, you know, reactivate them by paying something on the back. Now these will fit into the, the spaces down here. Right now they're just a little bit tight in my version and I have not sanded it down just yet. I have been told that the, the regular, the, the official version of the game, they will go through meticulous, um, you know, checks and balances to make sure that they fit easily so you can uh, take them in and out because you'll need to flip them over when you use them. Um, but yeah, for each faction, this is really where a main aspect of the asymmetry, because all these factions are asymmetric, uh, even though most of their parts are the same. These abilities here, so Ritual of the Tooth, School of the Sap, Ritual of the Eye, these are the uh, three of the abilities from the Gathering. Now, some of the other ones uh, for the clans, we have Startling Battle Cry, or School of the Streets for the Uprising, or The House Endures, or Blue Blooded Guilt um, for the uh, nobility. But each one also has a little bit of uh, continuity because they all have some form of ambush, except Artful Ambush um, for, uh, <laughs> for the Uprising. Um, and they they tell you you know the name what it does when it happens again all things that will be revealed in time and then we have the uh the actual like player markers um which show you the order track based on how many victory points you have in the game um some other things we have the one two and three for which of the three areas are going to, uh, you know, fight against each other, um, how they're going to resolve, I should say. We have these portal tokens, which again, I have not needed yet, um, but I'm sure there will come a time when I uncover uh, the reason for having those. Um, we have the collaborator disc, which will spin 
upwards and once you've used it three times it goes away and that slots into this little round area i try to move this carefully whoops sorry deck of cards it says hexer is the name of uh, up here and so it would just slot right in there and then you can spin it as you go which i mean there's just so much cool um thought that went into the design of these and uh that reminds me on the back I said these are double-sided um double-sided boards and they actually made use of that on the front and the back i'm not going to pick it up i'm going to ruin it but on this which we'll get to in a second it shows they've uh beveled out a, a thing on the back here so that a card would you know slot in here or when you're on a tabletop you can slide that in there and then remove it without this just like resting on top of it which is just like a super nice touch that uh just everything was done with intention and thoughtful and yeah it's just wonderful um and then you have this which is the active player token which is i mean for with a wife who this is one of her main <laughs> criticisms of games that they they're so cool but they don't put enough time into their first player token or active player token um it's just like a really nice like wooden just like object that you can pass from person to person um so those are the 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 faction components again wonderful just Games are boxes of toys with rules, and the toys that are in here are just delightful. Um, off to the side, you see these uh, sites of power. There's one for each of the faction. I just showed you the, the vault tree for the, uh, the gathering. There's also the old sentry, the printing press, and the mantle for the other factions. And again, those will slot in cards behind them, um, and you can unlock them. Uh, when at a certain time in the game and they those cards become part of your deck um yeah there's victory points and ones and fives um man, where else to go <laughs> can tell i'm just i was just hoping uh that this was going to write itself as i went i just wanted to bask in how beautiful this game is even as a uh prototype so i guess moving on to the cards because th this game is a deck builder um well one of its many things it's a deck builder everybody has uh the the very similar starting deck again beautiful back uh the artwork on the cards unique to each faction of course um and there's artwork which you're going to see there's re repeated uh pieces of art here all amazing but um you know understand when this comes out for real these are all said to uh, the, the plan is every single one of these is going to have unique artwork. So not just a unique name, but it will look different too. Now from faction to faction, that's already the case. There's al already a very clear, until I have not played uh, the clans, my physical version yet, because they're still all in numerical order. Um, there's still a very clear visual cue that the, the factions are different. It's just that within the faction, there are lots of duplicates, which will not be the case forever. Um, but just to, to highlight a couple of the cool ones um, from each of the decks, I've pulled out a few here. So starting up at the top, Nobility. This is the, this ridiculous crown on top of this like uh, little kid. Um, and just shows like, they're they're holding on to power with you know as ridiculous as it may seem it's like he was born into it so he gets it um i guess that's a commentary on political systems um because it deserves to be the gilded wall this is like a really uh, you know the nobility as you might imagine um is just all about the fanciness just the the uh strength of image and uh you know the way things used to be um so each faction is going to have some of their cards that need to be unlocked right now i probably these are going to be some of the most evocative pieces of art and most of i think all of these actually um the myth cards that get unlocked have no art the first and last uprising the few must learn to fear the many i mean that is going to be pretty sick i imagine and right now boop, it's just that but um but we have the black powder ploy um so you can see uh something is gonna go down there but also a pretty serious scene there i love this each each of the factions again they, their starting decks are um i believe i could be wrong but i believe identical 
like the 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 just the base cards not their um you know not the the card that they start with their ruse they always start with the, the jester hat here but these have different rules the ruses are the same and the rest of the deck is the same too they just unlock things or they lose things over time so each one has their own version of i love this just like a jokey version of like oh it's a person but it's like clearly not um so you put that down in an area and everyone thinks you're gonna go to battle and you flip it over and you're like ha 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 it's just planks of wood <laughs> um the the clans this is one of the cool when when pablo posted this on social media i just remember thinking this was remarkable um the nixing knife their terrible work done they slipped into the sea again the the game is filled with these the names the the flavor text that just draw you in with just enough just enough information to be like i want to learn more um, and then each of them has uh, this just like enormous machine of war of some sort. And this is the hull upon the waves, just this huge, ridiculous boat for the clans. Um, the gathering you know, is the creepy cult-like one uh, you might imagine. So the cult of dreams. Uh, the fox, which uh, again, the, there are a bunch of these and, and they're all gonna be looking differently. So obviously that is not a fox. <laughs> That's more like an owl, but the mask maker just like super creepy but awesome looking i and but then again the moon vault and the great and glorious night so probably some of the most like impactful pieces of art are still waiting to be seen so i am just as excited for that as anyone who's not currently holding you know what's out there already and last but not least um off to the side over here uh so one two three, four, and five. These decks of three different type or size cards make up the brain of the simulacrum. Sim, simulacrum, simulacrum. <laughs> um, but this is the uh, the solo mode developed by Ricky Royal um, and the crew at Eerie Idol. And it's, it. you know, you, lots of times solo game, well, first of all, solo modes can just feel like tacked on things. Um, and even when they're given you know, adequate development time to mechanically feel um, substantial. The the theme usually it doesn't, it's just like, well, it's the guys you'll be facing, you know, in a regular game, except it's a, it's a robot. And in this one, it's this weird, awesome story about how there's a fog coming down over the kingdom and there are like, whirring clicks coming out of the fog and just this odd clockwork you know machination that kind of looks like something you've seen before but not exactly and it takes over one of these factions which the the specifics of the faction kind of get wiped away a little bit and the, the inner mechanisms become that of the uh simulacrum but what's really cool is through this littlest deck, um, you can customize a lot of a lot of things. So all the red dots are making it harder. Um, the blue dots are ones that make it easier. Um, but there are a few different levers you can pull to make a customized uh, Automa opponent. Um, and the what's really cool in the rule book is it gives you in the setup like your standard. Um, set up for uh, easy, normal, hard, but also in the back, not only it gives you pre-built archetypes and it gives you four that are gonna have a very different feel, it also gives you the outlines for how to make your own. And as a dyed in the wool, like solo board game fanatic that I am, that's honestly something I'm most excited about. Well, you know, in addition to just everything is that people can put together their like little hand-built solo opponent and it's just like punching in your codes on the old Mega Man game uh, to where your save game was. People could be like, all right, you're gonna need this card, this card, um, you're gonna use this many fog cards and they're gonna start with three companies. And you could have maybe a totally different feel than if you played that exact game, but you switched out a couple of those um, you know, those trait cards with something else. So just really, really awesome. Um, yeah, it, it's just, I, I can't 
stress enough how lucky I feel to be able to experience this game in real life um, and how lucky many of you out there in internet land are going to be who who seek this game out and i'm sure i'll do this again um i'll do a whole new swada down the road when we get the real full uh old king's crown because you better believe i'm a day one backer <laughs> because i am not uh and then this one is i don't know we'll auction it off or, or or you know a drawing to go to someone but you better believe i'm gonna Oh, right, there's one more whole nother deck. Um, so the Kingdom cards, which I just realized while doing this video, is this like kind of cool, like above and below, sort of like nighttime, daytime, or like reflections in a water kingdom. So these are all the cards that will be going through the market. And again, supposedly, what I've been told, every one of these is going to be unique artwork, which Pablo, my man, like so, uh, so, oh, here it is, Overgrown Portal. <laughs> this is the one that you use the portal tokens for. Look at that, kismet. Um, but each one of these uh, do something completely different. And some of them, like this, look at the cards in an opponent's hand. Every spring you get to do that. That's a ridiculous ability in a hidden information, uh, you know, like a, uh, not in a hidden information, but like a bluffing or, deck building, you know, where your cards are your strategy to be able to just see what they have. They, they went into the creating of this deck and intentionally said they have not sanded down the edges and play tested these into uniformity. So there are going to be cards in here that are just better. There are also going to be situationally cards that are maybe aren't normally as good, but in the certain game are incredible. And what that's going to, uh, because not just is this the market, which should be normalized by how much uh, excitement people have to get that one card. But just because you take the card and you put it on your board and you're just gonna have to trust me on this, there's a slot under the board and you're going to place one of your guys whoop, behind that board. And I guess I can do a little bit while I'm talking. Um, that is now like, defending this kingdom card. Now that would be a pretty good defense because there aren't that many cards that are uh, more than 11. Um, but down the road, if you assign someone to the great road that is greater than 11, you can just go steal this card. So the thing that the, you know, that one card that was letting people look at your hand, you know, your opponents look at your stuff, if they are defending it with not that strong of a creature, you can make it, you can make them regret that and go take it over go with a bigger number guy and just steal it from them. And then if their people go away and now that's your thing, your broken tool that you get to use. So um, it again, not only is the free market kind of like uh, fixing of, well, the people will assign worth based on what it's actually worth. No, 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 <laughs> they, they will do that. But also if people, uh inaccurately assigned worth and then they see it in play and they're like "Ooh, that's broken you can go steal it <laughs> so so sorry there's a little bit of uh mechanics mixed in with the um middle, little bit of the ideas mixed in with the stuff um but i just can't help it the, again the best games to me my brain really focuses on you know what let's go back over there and talk about this all right can you tell i'm just like excited about this game. I, I mean, hopefully that comes through. This channel is nothing if not um, kind of uh, exuberant about the things I'm exuberant about. And um, that's really what the SWADA series was intended to be from the beginning. Um, but honestly, of the games that I've shown so far, this might be the one that I'm the most just like over the top, can't say enough good things about. Um, and this is only the first video. There's the whole second video. Um, and I'm just kind of worried about the length of that one could become because there's a lot that's going into this game. Um, it, it boils down to be not really that rules heavy, even though there are, you know, 50 some pages of rules. Again, once you kind of understand the concept, you start to interlink those things with the keywords in the same way that once you sort of learn root 
from the beginning and the hard way, when you learn a new faction, it's not like starting over from scratch because everything else you know can be utilized with that new faction. And I found myself in the games I've played so far in real life, just like picking things up, having to go to the rule book less and less, and which means I can just stay in the moment, stay in the game space that much more. And it is, it is a remarkable, remarkable uh, experience. And that's just playing solo mode right now. I mean, playing against the guys over TTS um, in our two very different time zones was amazing. And the, the, the amount of surprise you can hear in other people's voice when they think that you're going to go heavy into one thing and you do something else is just awesome. But the amount of surprise in me when the, when the simulacrum just does something that I didn't think it was going to do is also awesome. Um, yeah, it's just there's so much... Uh, there's so much thought that went into what would make this game feel good and I'm just so glad that much thought and more maybe even went into making the game look good. Um, what I was going to say over at the table and I was like I might as well be looking at you when I say this is my brain really gravitates to two type of games now. One or certainly the game, the last game that I really featured on the channel which is Battle Card um, which is a bare bones very quick to the table, quick to play, quick to put away experience. Um, so something that's that's elegant um, and that's clean and and exactly the size and the time and everything that it needs to be. The other thing my game my brain loves to gravitate towards is something like Old King's Crown. Something just like cryptic and huge and weird in that way that you, you just can't get it out of your mind and you want to explore more, but at the same time, you need to be thinking about the, the battles that are gonna happen, but you wanna know about the lore, but you wanna know what's in your opponent's hand, and you wanna just touch the components because they look and feel so good. Like, it's a rich world that I wanna keep bringing back to the table. I want I want to selfishly keep playing the solo mode, and it's getting faster as I play it, which is great um, because that means I get to play it more often. But I I unselfishly I cannot wait to share this game with more people. And again, that's just the prototype. That's just the one with the cards that are duplicates or some that don't have art at all. I can't even fathom what this is going to be like in the final version. So I'm going to close with that because I'm just going to keep heaping praise uh, and it'll never be high enough. Old King's Crown looks and feels awesome. I can't wait to tell you about the rules, especially the solo mode coming up soon. Um, so in future, when this is a campaign, if you if, if you are living in that, that like neck of the timeline, um, there will be a link down below where you can go to the Kickstarter to go check it out. Um, otherwise, there is a link there to go to the pre-launch page. Um, so I, I please go do that. The Eerie Idol Games guys are awesome. Thank you so much for this prototype copy. I, I hope that I can do some amount of honor that you've done me by sending it to show off your awesome game. So with that, um, thanks for taking a positive give pause, and uh, we will see you next time.